What's up guys, my name is Technobah here for Troubleshoot and today I've got an incredibly useful video for you if you use Hyper-V or are thinking of using Hyper-V for its checkpointing functionality. Now basically, when you use a virtual machine, you can go ahead and install a virus, delete everything by accident, and you can roll back to a previous save state, which in Hyper-V is called checkpoints. However, while learning about this to use this in my own workflow, I did come across a couple of things that weren't really explained too well, but would have been really useful to know before the fact. Basically, over here, I have the Hyper-V Manager with a bunch of virtual computers inside of them. And as you can see, I'm currently on Windows 10, where I have the main system itself, one checkpoint from early in December of last year, and now, which is where it will boot up to as soon as we double-click or right-click connect. Now, what exactly is checkpointing? Well, if you go ahead and create a checkpoint, it looks a little something like this, and you can go ahead and switch between previous checkpoints, create new ones, delete old ones, etc, etc. And this is where things weren't really explained too well, but I'm really going to dumb it down so absolutely everyone can understand it if they're going to be working with virtual machines. With all of that out the way, if I go ahead and double click on this, it'll boot up into the now save state, which is over here. If I hit start, you'll go ahead and see the desktop in a short while. I'll hit sign in and you'll see exactly what the desktop looks like. Here's the screen, it's just a black background with a display driver and installer and an old version of the NVIDIA graphics drivers. Let's say I wanted to capture the save state, I'll put a bunch of programs on here, and I'm about to go ahead and debug a virus or something like that. How exactly do I save the state that it's in now for later on? Well, it's actually pretty simple. If you're here, you can go to Action, followed by Checkpoint, though I would highly recommend not checkpointing while the computer is on. Why is this? Well, it's because it's going to save the entire system and all of its currently used RAM into your hard disk so that you can boot up into this exact same state later on. So if I was watching a video here, I created a checkpoint, I shut down the computer, deleted everything, started up the computer again while rolling back to that checkpoint, then you'll see that the video would probably still be playing because it takes all of the RAM here and puts it onto your hard disk and we'll boot up to this exact same state later on. Either way, I'll move these across to there. I'll go ahead and shut down the computer and wait for it to turn off. Anyways, once it's done, you'll get back to here. And after expanding the checkpoint window, we have the original version and now, which will be separate from the original version. If I go ahead and double click on the virtual machine, at the very top, I can go to action followed by checkpoint, or I can right click on the virtual machine itself and go to checkpoint. Once you do that, you'll see a checkpoint pop up where your now cursor was, and this is the checkpoint that we just created. Then our now state is moved into a child of this checkpoint over here. Now, if I were to go ahead and boot it up, it had booted up in this now state over here. Note that this checkpoint over here was the one that we created just now after moving the desktop icons. So I'll make sure to leave it where now is selected. I'll double click on Windows 10 and I'll go ahead and boot up the machine. Once it's booted up, I'll go into sign in and we have everything exactly where we left it. I'll go ahead and delete these two items and I'll create a new text document over here. Note that you could do literally everything at the stage. You could delete absolutely everything and we'll just go ahead and shut it down. So say that we've run our virus testing, etc, etc, and we want to roll back to the previous state. How exactly do we do that? Well, now is where we are currently and all of our changes will be made and saved here temporarily until we checkpoint it. So if I were to go back one and go to the parent, which is the one we created probably a minute ago, I can right click, click apply, and we get this pop up over here. Now, if I were to click create checkpoint and apply, where we are currently would be saved and would go back one checkpoint. Or you can hit apply and it'll just go back a checkpoint without saving. Now, nothing noticeably changed. Either way, let's go ahead and start it up now that we've rolled back. We'll go sign in, and as you can see, our desktop is back to where it was, the notepad file is gone, and these two files are back on our desktop, ready to be used, etc, etc. If I were to go ahead and move these somewhere else, I'll put them, say, there, put it inside of the folder, shut it down, yes, wait for it to close, and then I were to go ahead and create another checkpoint where now is currently, so I'll go right-click, checkpoint, this checkpoint over here is where the icons are at the bottom, and this checkpoint over here are where the icons are on the right-hand side, which we created earlier, and this one over here, the items are on the left-hand side of our desktop. So let's say that we've gone ahead and edited this one over here, and we want to save our progress, which was in now, as the previous checkpoint. How exactly do we do that? Well, you simply create a new checkpoint wherever you are, and we'll call it bottom, because that's where the icons are. We'll call the previous one right, 
and the top one will leave as is. Either way, say that the icons were on the right hand side, we moved them to the bottom and we created a checkpoint. How exactly do we replace the one that says right with the one that says bottom? Well, you can't drag these around. And if you right click, you only have the option to delete checkpoint or delete checkpoint subtree. So if I want to remove the one on the right hand side and replace it with the bottom one, all I need to do is simply right click the right one, delete checkpoint, delete. And as you can see, all of the children from inside of right have now been moved up one step. They're not entirely all the way back up here, but they were moved one step back up. Either way, if I go ahead and select this one, apply, you'll see that our icons are now on the bottom of our screen, which they are. It's inside of the folder over here, and for some reason, the Windows background has come back. Hello. Either way, shutting down our virtual machine, we could go ahead and edit this or delete it, etc., etc. But I'll just go ahead and create a couple of checkpoint subtrees. So we have bottom two, and I'll just make a bunch more from here. So now that we've got a bunch of checkpoints and it's taking up a hell of a lot of space, if we want to delete everything from bottom two and all of its children as such, all we need to do is right click on bottom two and go to delete checkpoint subtree. Then all of a sudden, all of the checkpoints that were children of that will now also vanish. So if I create a bunch more checkpoints, I'll call this bottom two and bottom three. If we go ahead and delete bottom two, just separately, you'll see that it now goes bottom and bottom three. So we got rid of that and we can go ahead and rename bottom three to bottom two, etc., etc. Either way, this is your way of versioning your virtual machines and it's incredibly useful for having save states that don't take too much space. Just remember that you really should have your computer off at the time, otherwise it'll save all of the RAM into physical space and you'll lose a ton of hard disk space for probably not that much gain. And if you have a relatively slow hard disk running or storing this virtual machine, then it may take a little bit longer to boot up than normal if it's loading up a lot of RAM. Thank you all for watching. This has been a super simple video on Hyper-V checkpointing. Hopefully that cleared up some of your questions as it did for me. Anyways, I'll see you all next time. Ciao.